Rub up your engines! Juan Diego says, I've worked as a gas attendant for a bit and noticed almost everyone tops off the tank. Can this cause damage to your car? It can in modern cars in the long run because the way that the anti-pollution system works, which is called the EVAP system that keeps the gasoline vapors in your gas tank from polluting the atmosphere, they go through a system and they go into a charcoal canister that filters out the hydrocarbons and then pure air comes out the other end. Those only work with gasoline vapors, not liquid gasoline. Well, if you keep topping it off, the vent hose comes off of there, gasoline, raw gasoline can get in the vent hose. And if that raw gasoline gets stuck in that charcoal canister, it can destroy it over time. Some of these charcoal canisters are four or five hundred bucks, and some of them are two, three hundred dollars labor because you got to take the gas tank off the vehicle in order to get to the stupid thing. So it's not a good idea to top up your gas if you got any modern car, you know, anything that's like 1970 newer is going to have that stuff on. It has to be a really old car for it not to bother it. Doris Kilo said, would you recommend a diesel BMW? Yes, but only to my worst enemy. <laughs> I worked on Winnie the other day. I said to the guy, why did you buy a diesel BMW? And he said, well, you know, I thought diesel, and they run forever with no maintenance, and it's a BMW. It's German. It's got to be great. This thing turning into an endless money pit, and he's getting rid of the thing. You don't want to buy one if you value your money. Now, if you were going to buy one, don't buy it, lease it. The new ones, they generally don't break out until they get old. They won't break down until they get a lot of miles on it and get to be, you know, five, six, eight, ten years old. But they're so expensive, it's stupid to buy one. You could lease one if you really wanted to have one. And definitely don't buy a used one with high mileage because, oh man, alive, are those things expensive. When I hooked up my scan tool to his BMW, there were like 47 separate codes on it for problems that they had in the diesel system and the electronics. Those things are endless money pits. Don't buy one. Yuchia says, Scotty, should I get a 2012 Ford Fusion or a Honda Accord 2012? And what's the difference between the 12s and the 11s? I would definitely go Accord in that uh, they're not making Fusions anymore. Those year Fusions, some of them had automated transmission problems. I really wouldn't. If you wanted to buy an older Ford Fusion that had the transmissions that didn't have problems, yes, they can be decent vehicles. But the later model ones, they've had transmission problems. They're not even making them anymore. I mean, they got such a bad rap, they just, Ford's not making them anymore. So definitely go with a Honda Accord on that, but do have the transmission of the Accord checked out because that's the one weakness of them. And any mechanic can check it good. Pay a mechanic, whatever they charge, 80, 100 bucks, and they'll uh, tell you what kind of shape it's in by running a scan tool and running a few tests. Ragnar Arnborson says, Fiat or Mini? Well, <laughs> Yeah. Frying pan or fire? <laughs> the Mini, just because they are made in England. They do have BMW technology, which is real expensive, and they break. But the Fiats are such rolling piles of crap. I mean, they, they're they not making a Fiat 500s to sell in the United States anymore. They're such failures. And they're even talking about pulling out Fiat entirely as a brand out of the United States, because I believe last year they only sold something like 5,500 Fiats in the United States, all of their different Fiat cars. So basically, Americans realize they're crap. And the Minis, they sell quite a few of them. They're very popular cars. I wouldn't buy one because it's BMW technology. They cost too much money. And when they break, they cost a fortune to fix. And they break a lot as they age. But out of those, I definitely would go Mini before I went to any Fiat. <laughs> Easy Rider says, Scotty, what do you think of an 84 Toyota Cressida as a daily driver? Depends on the mileage. Now, my wife, 83 Cressida. And it was a great car. But I got rid of it years ago because the leather was cracking on the seats. The paint was all fading off. The air conditioning didn't work that good anymore in the Texas sun, and that still used the R12 Freon, which cost a fortune. I converted it to the 134A, but it didn't work as good. It's not as efficient when you have a R12 system and convert it to an R134. I mean, it's not something I'd, uh, I'd drive as a daily driver, but if you live someplace like, say, New Mexico or someplace California where maybe you don't need AC and it runs good, yeah, you could toy around with it. Just realize when they're that old, they're not made to last that long and be dependable when they're that old. The rubber will be rotten and you'll start to have problems. Sir and Sus says, Scotty, I got a 2015 Hyundai Santa Fe Limited Sport 2.0 Turbo. What do I need to have my vehicle last many years? Take care of it and don't gun it. That's a turbocharged engine. They're going to wear out faster if you drive really fast and you're always pushing the accelerator pedal to the metal. Don't do that. 
drive it conservatively. Change the oil and filter since it's a turbo. I would change it every 5,000 miles and I'd only use full synthetic oil. I like the Castro synthetic oil. You can use any kind you want. But you want to take care of it because a turbocharged engine will wear out faster if you really hit it. It can go fast. And if you do change the oil a lot and don't really rag it all the time, they can still last. Nothing like a Toyota or a Honda, but you got it. Don't, you know, decide that you're going to be Mr. Drifter and drift around in it all the time. You'll burn the thing out. Scotty, can you give your feedback on a Mazda 3 2012 non sky active? I have a pending deal. It's about 100,000 kilometers, which isn't bad, but I'm hesitant because of what you said in the past. It's a 2012. It's eight years old. If it has a standard transmission, go ahead and buy it. Those things can run forever. Now, if it has an automatic transmission, they could still last 100 without too many problems. Don't pay too much. And if you got a really good deal, it can be a decent vehicle. The newer ones are actually better. Mazda's teaming up with Toyota now and sharing technology, but that just started up recently. So it could be okay. If it's a standard, I'd definitely buy it. If it's an automatic, I'd road test it good and have a mechanic check it before I'd buy it then. Because if he says, nah, the transmission's starting to go, don't even think about buying it. Earl Hutchinson, how did you get on CBS? Yeah, I did a show called Crank It Up on uh, CBS here in Houston, KHOU. Caught along, hilarious story. Some of it can't be on uh, broadcast TV or even the internet for that matter. But basically, it turns out that uh, there's a guy that they had that for various reasons they weren't satisfied with, uh, including a morals contract thing. So they fired him and they needed somebody to replace him. And I had just written my book, Everyone's Guide to Buying a Used Car and Car Maintenance. And one of my customers was a writer for the Houston Chronicle, the paper. They got me on the front page of the paper. And then his wife went to the uh, director of news on CBS here. She worked for them. She was an anchor. And she said, hey, you ought to put this guy on. He's kind of funny. And so they put me on. And after that, it just went on. I was on there for like, I don't know, 13, 14 years or something. Then they ran out of money, which was actually the best thing for me because then I went to YouTube. And believe me, local television is really cheap. They hardly pay anything at all. I now make every month on YouTube what it took me a year to make when I was on TV. And if you take the last year that I've had, every month, it was what I made in 10 years. <laughs> so, <laughs> YouTube is much better, and it's a wider audience, too. You know, I thought, hey, when I got on local TV, I'd get like four or 500,000 people watching me, and as soon as I left the show, it would go back down to like 100,000 people. So, it went up a lot when I was on. I thought, hey, if I can get that kind of thing in one brand, Houston, Texas, why not go for the whole world? And that's what I did. Now, here I am, and I'm closing in on a billion views. So, worked out great for me. I can't complain. Thanks for not paying me anymore, CBS, because it worked out in my favor. Mr. Logic 23 says, Scotty, I drive an 09 Infinity 37S coupe with 96,000 miles. I keep having a recurring problem with an engine code of PL300. I change the spark plugs and ignition coils. What else can I do? PL300 is random intermittent misfire. It's probably one of the hardest codes to fix because there can be over three dozen things that cause it. Yeah, it's just the way that it goes. You're better off finding a guy like me to plug in his heavy duty scan tool, drive it around for about 20 minutes, then bring it back and analyze any historical data and all the live mode six data to see what's happening. And you can get a pretty good idea of what's going on because we mechanics have machines that can not only access the code memory, but can access all the information of when it tripped. It's called freeze frame data. And we can analyze that and the live frame data. Start there rather than guess. But if it runs good enough, I mean, you could just live with it. I got customers drive them years later. That way, and they still go good enough that they don't care. Shregis PR. Hey, Scotty, which motorcycle brands are reliable? Well, you know, a lot of motorcycles are really reliable these days. Of course, the big ones. Honda, Yamaha, Suzuki, Kawasaki, they make very reliable motorcycles. Anything from little bitty puddle jumpers to full blown race motorcycles. And they're all quite reliable. Now, strangely enough, I always liked the English motorcycles. And I presently have a Triumph, but it's made in Thailand. They opened the factory in Thailand, and they are extremely dependable. They're nothing like the old Triumphs were. For me growing up in the 60s and 70s, that they, just, they were fast, but they just fell apart. The new ones are made in Thailand, and the Thais do a very good job making these things, and they're excellent motorcycles. So actually, a lot of motorcycles out there are very good, well made these days, but you don't 
want to get something you can't handle. A lot of guys are macho. Oh, I'll get the fastest one. And you might kill yourself. Those things are so fast. When I was a kid, a fast motorcycle had 65 horsepower. Some of these things are pushing 300 horsepower now. That's out of control. Get, get one that you can handle if you're going to buy one. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.